Well, Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control NAVDAC, Professor Mujisola Diaye, joins us now via phone to discuss uh, the issues surrounding access to the vaccine and distribution in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. Well, the fact that Nigeria is yet to produce an indigenous coronavirus vaccine uh, will have the conversation linger uh, for a really long time. Now, in the course of this production, let's talk about the prospects, the challenges. Where exactly are we as a country? Thank you for inviting me. Uh, in terms of prospects and challenges uh, for manufacturing of vaccine locally, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge. Uh, because to, make a, to develop a vaccine takes many years. The COVID vaccine, uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna, uh, were developed within a year. That is a, a feat that uh, is not common at all. So as a country, uh, we have to put more emphasis on science, uh, especially uh, bi for biological products. Mm. Uh, but in terms of regulation, uh, NAVDAC has to attain a maturity level, and this maturity level is determined by so many requirements. Uh, you have four maturity levels, one, two, three, and four. Uh, if NAVDAC attains maturity level three, then the country can manufacture our own vaccine. What does it take to uh, get to level three? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, to get to level three, we have to meet 287, 287, what we call sub-indicators. Uh, the indicators are about 80, 86 or so. So under those 86, you have uh, many indicators, about 287. And these are requirements. These requirements cover entry inspection, market authorization, market control, uh, vigilance, uh, site license, things like that. Which means that WHO, which is the uh, body behind this uh, majority level three uh, ranking, expects any regulatory agency to meet the 287 requirements. All right, Professor, at this stage now, in what specific way does NAVDAC expect to be supported to achieve this result in as short a period as possible? Thank you. Yes, NAVDAC uh, is being supported uh, uh, through the COVID-19 intervention fund because the government realized uh, that the health sector has been neglected for years. However, this, is, this intervention is because of COVID-19. However, before COVID-19, we started this audit uh, about almost three years ago, you know, and uh, we got the first audit uh, visit June last year. So we've been working on this and uh, part of the funding or resources have to come from NAVDAC. Uh, we have been very prudent to ensure that there is no wastefulness uh, in order to have uh, tools, for example, vehicles. They want to know whether you have enough vehicles to do inspection. Whether it is a clinical trial inspection, whether it's good manufacturing uh, inspection, whether it's post-marketing surveillance inspection, they want to be sure that you can move from place to place to make the effect, uh, inspection effective. That is just one example. All right, Prof. Another one. Okay. Let's look at the health sector uh, in general now, because you've made mention of that. Well, given the vantage position that your agency occupies, what lessons would you say we've learned from the very first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic? And uh, how should we brace up to face the second wave that is staring us right in the face? 
Yes, if I understand you clearly, so what lessons have we learned yes, please. from COVID-19 in terms of the health sector? Yes, please. Good. COVID-19 gave us a kick, a very strong kick uh, in the behind, so to say, uh, woke us up uh, from our slumber because the health sector was neglected uh, for many, many years. And, but the government responded uh, to that. Uh, let me just give you an example. The manufacturing sector, pharmaceutical manufacturing sector, is one of the health sectors that have been neglected, that have been neglected, rather. Uh, the government uh, started talking uh, through NAVDAC uh, to the needs of the manufacturing company. All right, the that prof. Made, they made available some loans, okay. low interest loans, so for manufacturing companies to rebuild their infrastructure and improve their quality management. So that is one example. The government is also putting money into research and development uh, through CBN. That is extremely important. Because without research and development, we can never make vaccines uh, or any other therapeutics for that matter. So the government is doing a lot. All right, Prof. Uh, and, uh, yes. Now, continuity is what matters, such that as we face the second wave exactly. of the pandemic, we are better prepared and we can tackle it headlong. Director General of NAVDAC, Professor Mojisola Adeyi, thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. Thank you. Thank you very much. And have a blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. You're watching TV.